So my name is Drew from Endeavor Ray 3D. For those of you who might not know me, uh, since I can't see you all, I'm not sure if I've met you before or not. Um, and it's our goal to make 3D printing easier. So we're going to go over the process of 3D printing today and then common troubleshooting things that arise. So then you will be, uh, have all the tools that you need to 3D print with your students. So um, what teachers, um, like what subjects do you guys teach that are there? They teach all subjects. It's a third grade, two third grade teachers, a fourth grade teacher, a librarian, and a principal. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. So um, we want to help with lesson plan integration, which is one of the reasons why I asked what subjects you guys teach. So um, we work a lot with different schools to help build lesson plans that are, that are directed at their curriculum themselves. So if you have an idea of like, hey, I really want to incorporate 3D printing into the Civil War or into cell structures, and you're, I'm not really sure how to do it, then let us know because we're here to help. Uh, I'm a certified teacher. We have another certified teacher on staff too. Um, and it's our goal to make 3D printing easy. So we want to help make sure that you know how to work the printers and especially your students know how to run the printers. A lot of schools do that as well. Um, and we want to do all the troubleshooting needs that you might uh, have. We're here to help with that too. We want to help you integrate your curriculum so it's printing things that are relevant and especially make sure that they don't break down. So if something does happen where they, um, they just stop working, like, we're, we're a phone call away. You can fill out a tech request, and I'll send all that information so you guys can get a hold of us um, afterwards. Because we want to make sure that these are running in the classroom, and that's our main goal. So with 3D printing, there are four big steps that are involved. The first big step is what's going to take the longest, and it's going to be the hardest for your students to figure out. And that would be the design step, where they're actually going to create something uh, in 3D to be able to send it to the printer. So we use Tinkercad as a great place to start. Um, and I said, that I think that would be perfect for third and fourth graders to start with Tinkercad. And we have tutorials on our website. We're working on a lesson plan that's gonna be released this week. That's on how to introduce Tinkercad to your students. Um, that's gonna be out there as well. And I can send you guys a link to that afterwards um, too. So we wanna we show you like the tools that you need to begin. And that is gonna be the hardest part. Because uh, you're going to need to manipulate objects in 3D, and they're going to need to kind of figure out how to add shapes and how to take uh, subtract shapes and put holes inside of shapes and stuff like that. So it's it's a little tricky and it's a little time consuming. Um, and I think it's the hardest because when you make something on a computer, you're not really sure exactly how it's going to look when it's 3D printed if you've never 3D printed something before. So it takes a little bit of practice. Um, but we're here to help with that too. That's why we have um, our troubleshooting resources and lesson plans and stuff like that to help guide you through it. Um, once your students have a 3D model, then they're gonna put that in a program that converts that 3D model for the printers. So they're basically gonna take that file and then put it in another one. And the file type that you're looking for that will be downloaded from Tinkercad will be .stl or .obj. And there are also lots of places on the internet that you can find that have 3D files and stuff um, that are not just like, you know, baby Groots or Yoda heads and stuff like that. Uh, you can actually find lesson plans and stuff on our website that are links to that. There's a great website called Thingiverse.com that has a bunch of awesome stuff that are, are educational related. And then you can download that .stl file and be able to print it. Because you have to take that .stl file and load that into Cura. Just like you would upload an email attachment, you load that into Cura. And then Cura is going to be set up with the specific settings for your printer. And imagine Cura is kind of like the recipe that you're going to arrange everything together in. So if you have Cura um, all set up, all you have to do is load your model into Cura and then export it back out of Cura. And when you export it back out, it'll be the size that you want it to be. Excuse me. It'll be what temperature you want it to be printing at, what resolution excuse me, or quality that you want it to be on like the layer heights and stuff like that. You can choose all those settings. But if you want to, we're going to set up all the settings today and then you won't have to worry about setting them up again. They'll all just be set. Um, and the, that is profile specific too. So if you have students logging into different accounts, just know that the first time that student logs into that computer, they'll need to set up the settings um, for that particular account to make sure that it's set. And we have screenshots of that on the SD card. It's in our very extensive user manual. It's also on the SD card. We have videos of it on our website. And we're here to contact you to help you to be able to figure it out because it's quite a few steps. So we want to help make sure that you get everything um, together. And we're going to go over them today too. So once you have your file and you've exported it out of Cura, you're going to save it onto your SD card, which looks like this. So you're going to take it and save it on here. And then that micro SD card, which is found in the back of this right here, this is what holds all your information. So once you've saved it from USB on here or with your other card, then this is going to go into the front of the printer. And this is that third step. This is the transfer step. We're actually going to transfer it to the printer itself. So it's going to go and then go right in here. 
and then it clicks to go in. It pushes in and clicks and then clicks out. And then once it's in there, you'll plug your printer in, and then if you have the filament loaded and it's already level because you've leveled it before, then you'll just hit print, and that's the fourth step. So that's kind of the whole process, and it can be broken down into those steps. And the biggest part of those steps is really the design. So once you create a 3D model, you're going to slice the model in Cura, then you're gonna transfer the model to the printer using the SD card, and then the fourth step, finally, you're gonna hit print on the printer using this control knob to spin and, and select. So that's kind of what we're gonna go over today. So um, that first design step, that's gonna be something that um, we have lots of links to, and I'm gonna send you guys a link to it in, after the training's over, so you guys will have that. Um, so you guys will be ready to go with it. Um, and the second step, though, is here. Okay, Drew, on these three teachers, we did Tinkercad last year. So all three of these teachers have teacher accounts. And now they still have last year's kids. Is there a fast way to clean those out? And if they clean them out, are they deleting the kids' projects? Or will the kids' login still have them? I'm not really sure, actually. Um, I don't know. I haven't used the classroom feature enough in Tinkercad to really know off the top of my head. Normally, we log into the student account. Um, we do stuff, and that's what we have a, a lot of other teachers do is they, the students don't make their individual accounts. They kind of all log into a teacher's account, um, and then they can do different things on there. So I'm not really 100% on that. Um, can you keep adding students to it? Or? Uh I think so. Um, what we'll try to do next week, if we have some time, I'll try to log in as one of the teachers and with one of their students from last year. One one teacher, she looped, so she has her kids from last year, but the other two did not. They still they have a different set of kids. So I'll I'll try to problem solve that and try to give you an answer so you'll know. Yeah, that'd be great, and that's something that uh, that we need to do more research on as well. So um, if we find out before, we'll let you know. Um, because, yeah, I definitely like to know that because I'm not really sure because especially as the new year's rolling around, I could, you could get quite a few students of doing things had a couple of years. You could, you could stock up on the student accounts. Uh, yeah. Um, so with that's awesome that you guys know Tinkercad a little bit. So let's go ahead and look at Cura. So on the SD card, you'll find um, Cura to be able to install it on the computers. And we're going to install Cura 15.4.6. Um, but there is a new version of Cura that's coming out um, relatively soon. That, um, that we'll use as well here in a couple weeks. And it works good too. Um, just know that if you guys decide to get more printers in the future or if you wanna upgrade to a different Cura, um, then you'll have that option available. And, and we're just in the process of creating all of our same support materials for the new version of Cura that we have for this uh, particular version. So if you guys can go ahead and grab hey, the- Hey Drew, can, can you hold on just a second? Sure. Uh, I'm gonna show them, we have one computer set up. So I'm gonna quickly show them what's on the flash drive and where that cure is and how it would install. Is that okay? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, and then I'll walk you guys through how to set up all the settings and all those things. That'd be great. I can also share my screen with you guys if you wanna see it, if it's on the big screen. I gotta share my screen with you guys. So here's what's on the SD card. I went ahead and showed, so you're good to talk about Cura and those pieces and parts by sharing your screen. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so um, if you guys wanna, are you gonna install it on the same computer as this one? Um, yeah. We don't know yet. We're thinking about probably having a STEM room and we'll put a couple of PCs in there for it. The bad thing is, is on how our network works, Every time a new user logs in, it resets any settings that's there. So the user almost has to know how to do it from scratch 
at least one time. Now, after that, it saves it every time the user signs in. Okay. But that's kind of a problem we have. But I'll work with them on that. Don't worry about that. Okay. Well, there's one thing that might help you to speed through that process. Um, once you set up your machine, I'm going to show you something that you can do that's really fast to load all the settings if you want to do that, if you can have multiple students working on it. So if we click add new machine, um, that, that's what's going to happen at the end once you get it installed. So I, I assume you guys aren't going to install it right now. You can install it later. Are y'all going to install it later? Uh, we are going to install it later, but if you want to go through it so they understand and see, uh, we're, we're really not for sure yet um, exactly how we're going to set up the room. It's kind of all kind of new, um, but we're thinking about maybe having a STEM user login that has some different permissions to it. Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So when you're installing it, like once you get it all installed, it's going to pop up and say um, uh, like new, add new machine wizard or first time run wizard. And you'll just click next. And then the type of printer is other because we build it ourselves in Fayetteville. And then you're going to go to Mendel as the operating system, M-E-N-D-E-L, and then hit next. And then you'll say finish. Woohoo! But there are two more things that we need to do. So we can manually go through and set all these settings because these need to all be set or since you guys it sounds like you're going to be doing it on multiple computers if you have your sd card plugged in inside of the the folder that has cura is what's called this printer profile dot i and i you can use this to quickly load all of the settings for this printer so once you have it set as other and then mendel you can click up here where it says file open profile and you can actually open the profile that you need. So in this case, I'm going to go to my SD card. We'll double click on Cura. And then here is the printer profile right there. And then when I click open, it's going to automatically set all of these settings exactly where they should be on all of them. So that can be a big time saver. So you don't have to individually go through all of these. And then the only other thing that you'll need to change are the sizes of your build area. And to change the size of that, you'll click machine and then machine settings. And then you'll change each one of these to five by six by four inches. So this one right here is going to be 125 by 150 by 100. And then you're gonna uncheck this. So these are the settings that you're gonna have it set up. And if you want to take a screenshot of these two, like uh, there's a screenshot on the SD card that is exactly of all of these settings. And if you look on the SD card, you'll see here is the screenshot. So those are all the settings that you need to set it up. So it has the same settings here on the side and these that you or your students can follow along with. And once you have the Cura loaded and all these settings set up, then you'll be ready to print. And we'll talk about these settings here a little bit. So the layer height, that's how close each one of the layers of filament is. So to be able to build something, it's got to stack layer by layer by layer by layer like a robotic hot glue gun. And the layer height, 0 0.2 is every two tenths of a millimeter, it's going to move up and do the next layer. And we print normally at 0 0.2. That's a good medium uh, quality print. And if you want to print in high quality though, you can go to 0 0.1, which would double your print time, but make your model look twice as good. Or you can do 0 0.3, which will actually uh, lessen your build time, but it's gonna be really thick and it'll look really rough because every three tenths of a millimeter, you have another layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 0 0.2. The shell thickness is the thickness of the outside part of your model. And we leave that at 0 0.8, so it's two shells. But you don't ever need to change this value. And just like this one up here, you, once you load the printer profile, you can leave all of these set, and you don't have to change them again if you don't want to. And the shell thickness for having two shells just gives you a good uh, solid model on each side. So each one of the shells are going to be two thicknesses thick. Same with the bottom top thickness. That's why that's the same amount. And the fill density is the amount that's filled inside of the model. So if you have a model, it's going to print this crosshatch pattern automatically inside of it. And if you want to do make a model really strong and durable, you can increase that, even all the way up to 100 where it would be solid. Or if you want it to be hollow, it could obviously be zero. We usually recommend between 5 and 20%. Normally, the smaller your model is, the more dense you want it to be so it's stronger. And the print speed is 50. 
And then that's how fast it's going to lay each one of the layers down. And if it tries to go too fast, it can actually peel up one layer before it lays down the other. That's why we recommend not printing any faster than 50. But if you want to make it print even a higher quality, you could change this down to 30 and change this to 0 0.1, and that's going to give you a really fancy model. That's going to be the best that, uh, that this printer can print. And I want to go ahead, though, and leave it at 50. And then our printing temperature is going to be 220 degrees. And that's what it's going to be set for melting your filament right here. And the size of your filament is the next thing that we can look at, and that's 1.75, where it says 1.75 right here. And then the nozzle size is how thick the nozzle of your printer is itself, and that's 0 0.4. And the last thing that we're going to talk about is this support type everywhere. So if I'm going to load a model, then we can see the actual supports and what it's going to do. So if I click load, I just need to find a .stl file. And on the SD card, there is a folder that says STL files. So we can click on that. And then I can open up the keychain um, or the dice, whichever one I want to do. I'll go ahead and open up the die and then hit open. And here is our model. Yellow means that it's printable. And I can actually click and move it around. And if it needs supports, I can actually click here for support type and leave that at everywhere. And then if it ever needs supports, it will automatically generate them. So I can load as many models as I want. So I can click load and load. How about I load the keychain too? So then I can have multiple models on here as long as they turn yellow. If they're gray, that means they're outside of the build volume of our printer itself, or this big. This entire size is how big that your printer can print. So it's, if it's outside this, or five by six by four inches, then it's not gonna be able to print. So once we have our models in yellow, we can cl click down here and click rotate. We can actually rotate them to make sure that there's a flat edge. But if I printed this up on the edge like that, you can see here what the supports will do here in a second. And I can, you can also rotate stuff side to side, so maybe you wanted to print it sideways, so it prints better. Or you can fit more models in by rotating them around. You can click and drag and drag models around. You can also hold the right mouse button and change your view. And you can click scale to actually scale something to be larger or smaller by dragging these cubes or adjusting these values here. So if I wanted something to be half size, I would just make this 0 0.5, because one is 100%. Or if I wanted to maybe increase it by 50%, I could do 1.5. Or I can click to max and make it gigantic. And this is the slice. This is how long it's gonna take to print. So it's gonna move this all the way across, and then when that's done, it's gonna give you a time and how much filament and material that it uses. And that's what this part on the top does. But if you want, you don't have to change any of these values. You can just load student models into this, this area. Make sure that they're all yellow by rotating and scaling them, and then print them out. So this is going to take 13 hours, which is totally fine. You can print stuff overnight all the time. Um, it's, we do it constantly at the shop. Because once those first couple layers stick down, then there's like a 99% chance that it's going to be able to finish the print. So then we're going to click view mode and then change this to layers just to show you what the different layers do. So there's going to be 485 layers in this. And you can see here is our dice. And this turquoise here in the middle, that is all of our support structure. So it automatically generated that because it saw that the die was sitting on an angle. And you can also scroll this down and see what each individual layer is going to print like. So you can see the inside of it here. And as it's loading, it will actually fill this inside with the crosshatch pattern, the same crosshatch pattern that is inside this right here. You guys can see that. So as this loads up, that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna fill that in with that crosshatch pattern. So you can see exactly what each layer is gonna do, layer by layer by layer by layer. And then when you're ready to print, then this is the model that you'll save. So um, when you take your model, you design it in Tinkercad, and then you load it into Cura, then the third step is where you're going to save it outside of Cura, where you're actually going to export it. And to do that, it's really simple. If you have the SD card plugged in, it might say SD right here, or save toolpath. And when you click on this, see there's the crosshatch pattern right there that it's gonna print, the support structure. Then it will save it automatically to the SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my normal view. And then I'm gonna click save toolpath. And then now it's gonna ask me where I wanna save it. And I'm gonna go ahead and save it over here. And we'll say six-sided dice, test. And then we click on our SD card, and then hit save. And that will save it to our SD card. And you can see it's saving right here. And then when it's done saving, now it's ready to be ejected. And you can either click down here where it says eject. On some computers, it gives you the option, most of the time Windows computers. And on Macs, you click open folder, and then you can click eject right here. And then you'll take that and put that SD card in the front of the printer. So we'll take this, and then we'll take the SD card out of it. And then this is that third step that we mentioned. 
where we're going to stick this in the front of the printer and stick it in there till it clicks. Now, if our filament was loaded, all we'd have to do is plug it in and then hit print. But since we uh, are setting this up for the first time, we're going to go over some other basic troubleshooting techniques. So that's kind of how the four uh, processes of the 3D printing um, steps go. But we want to double check our printer now for troubleshooting. So does anybody have any questions about how to 3D print something? Nope, we're good. Yeah, okay, awesome. So um, to be able to uh, check it, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna check and make sure that everything arrived and it's all set up like it should be. And this is also something, if you're gonna be moving them around a lot, that you'd wanna check. So you wanna make sure that this moves side to side really easily, this is the Y axis, and make sure that this belt is tight on each one of the printers. And then same thing on the one on the top. You wanna make sure that the X axis moves back and forth freely and the belt's tight right here on the top. And then you also wanna make sure that all these plugs are plugged in. So if it ever makes any crazy sounds, like grinding, like da -da 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 -da, like it's a dying transformer or something, then these plugs right here might be unplugged. So you can check and make sure that each one of these are plugged in. So there are four motors that run the printer. There's the X motor, which is this one, and it has a plug here and a plug here for the switch. There's the Y motor, which is this one that we mentioned, and that has a plug right here and a switch right here to make sure that both of those are plugged in. And then there's the Z motor, which is up and down, and that's right here, and it has a plug right there, and it has a little switch that's inside here that's a little harder to get to, but it's a switch right there to make sure it's plugged in. And then there's the E for extruder motor for the filament, and that's up here, and that's gonna feed the filament out, and that plug is right there. And that's what actually runs the filament and pushes the filament all the way through this tube and then out the end of the nozzle right here. So the only part that gets hot of this entire thing is the tip of this nozzle. This part doesn't get hot, none of the other parts of the machine get hot, but this part underneath this heat shield, it does. And same with the back, like if you get past this protective grommet right here, if a student pushes the model out of the way to get to it, that's the only way that something dangerous can happen. So anything that's awesome is gonna be a little bit dangerous. In the case of this one, um, that's why we give you all of the 3D tools that it comes with. So you have clippers, and you also have a pair of pliers, as well as a pair of tweezers to be able to reach in, to never have to reach in with your fingers um, to grab filament and stuff away from the nozzle itself. You can always use a tool. So how do they look by inspecting the printers? They all look good? They can't really see you guys? Yes, so far we're, we're getting the ink, the plastic form right now. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we'll do that step here in a little bit. So are, do they, they all look like they're, uh, they're all running well? Everything moves, nothing's stuck? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay, awesome. Everything seems like they're working really good. Great. Yeah, and the reason that we test this one too is when this whole plate comes off for your bill plates, and this is the print surface that it's going to print everything on, and sometimes if this is clicked on here incorrectly, it can actually run into this right here. That's why you want to make sure that the clips have it clipped right in the center. And then we always want to put this clip on the outside part because the inside part is where the motor is going to go to adjust right here in this corner as it moves around. So if we have all that set, then what we're going to do now is the most difficult part of 3D printing. And that is making sure that the bill plates themselves are level. And that's what we're going to go over right now first. So go ahead and take uh, your plugs and plug them all in so we know that they're all going. And this part's going to be kind of tough since I can't see you guys. Um, but Jeff's there to help, so you guys should be good. So once you have it plugged in, we're gonna need a folded sheet of paper. Any sheet of printer paper that's folded once. And we're gonna need those for each one of the printers. And you can rip it in half if you want to be able to uh, conserve paper. But just some uh, one piece of printer scrap paper. And then just set it on the bill plate. And let me know when you guys have that ready. And you guys can level one of them now, or you can level uh, multiple ones, whatever you wanna do. Okay, we all have the paper. Okay, awesome. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap this button and we're gonna home this to zero. So to do that, we're gonna click setup and then we're gonna click auto home. Now, so everything is gonna Drew, be done with this. Drew, do we fold, we fold the computer paper Just in one. half first? Okay. Yeah. yeah, either hot dog or hamburger, whichever one you guys wanna do. 
And then just get it folded and set it on there. And then we're going to tap the button and then tap setup and then auto home. And then that will move all the motors to zero. And that's what we're going to have them go to right now. Okay, we have the, the paper folded and we set it there, but we missed that next part. Was that where you auto homed? Yep, click setup and then auto home. And then that is going to move each one of the printers to zero. See how this one's moving all the way down? And then it moves the X and the Y to the edges too. So it goes to that inside corner. That's why we made sure the clip was on the outside. And if you don't have the paper under there right away, it's fine. Because we're going to put it under there. So no big deal. So let me know when the, mo when the printers stop moving and they're all at the bottom like this and they're homed. How they looking? Now. They are? Okay, awesome. So now we're going to disable these motors so we can move them around. So we're going to tap this button and then we're going to go to setup and then we're going to go to disable motors and tap. Uh oh. You're right. <laughs> the parent fall over? <laughs> nope, everything's good. I was trying to, my mic has a longer cord, so I was trying to unwrap it to try to put the microphone on the table. Okay. So once you've unlocked it, then we're ready to test it. And we're going to test it first before we heat it up. So to do that, I'm going to be picking my printer up and moving it around, but you want to leave yours flat on the table. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this nozzle, this whole nozzle assembly, to the corner above this part right here, this little wing nut, basically wing nut, this little bolt. So we're going to move this to the outside. And if the paper doesn't fit underneath it, you can squeeze it right here to be able to make sure it fits. And then you want the paper to be between the nozzle and the build surface. So it's going to be the nozzle, the folded piece of paper, the build surface, and then underneath that is this little bolt right here that we adjust. And as I said, it's important to leave yours flat because when you pick it up like mine, it can actually move the z-axis up and down. And since that's what we're trying to adjust, it can give you an inaccurate reading. So how are we doing? You guys got it there? Yep. Yeah, okay, awesome. So now we're going to test it by moving this piece of paper. And if the piece of paper doesn't move, like mine's not moving, that means that it's too close. But if it's moving and you don't feel any resistance or barely any resistance, that means that it's too far away. So imagine it kind of like toothpaste on a toothbrush. That's the best analogy that, uh, that I found. So if you have your, your toothbrush and you're, you're, you're holding your toothpaste up in the air and you squeeze it, it's not going to get on your toothbrush at all. It's going to go all over the place. That's the same thing with the nozzle. If it's too far away from the built surface, and it's going to knock the print loose, or it's going to turn into a giant pile of spaghetti, and it's not going to be able to stick layer by layer by layer by layer. So it's not going to stick together well. If it's too close, then it's going to get stuck. And if it gets stuck, it's just like if you're jamming your toothpaste into those toothbrush bristles. So if it's too close together, not very much filament is going to come out, just like the, no, not much toothpaste is going to come out. So as it's moving around, it might make a clicking noise or dig a trench inside of your model, or maybe part of the model prints on one side but not on the other side. That's because the printer is too close. So you're trying to find that happy medium, just like if you're holding your toothpaste above your toothbrush and you squeeze it and have it go across there. You want each layer to stick the thickness of the piece of paper from layer by layer by layer by layer. And what you want to do is when you move that piece of paper, you want to feel it vibrating from the resistance of the nozzle. So you want to feel it like bumping back and forth as you're moving it but not so close that, it's, that it doesn't move at all and not so far away that you barely feel anything. You want to feel quite a bit of resistance, so it's dragging a lot. And that's how, what we're trying to go for. And we're going to adjust it on different points to get to that level. 
come pull this one so you can kind of feel what he's talking about. Right? Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and adjust it from each, each corner. So we're going to start with this corner and then move it. And if it doesn't move, then we're going to adjust this down here. And this is the part that I mentioned might be kind of tough since I can't see you guys. But if it doesn't move at all, then that means that this is too high up. So we need to tighten this to pull it down lower. So you'll adjust this about a fourth of a turn and then test it. So you're going to go counterclockwise to make it tighter and pull it down and clockwise to go up. So count down and clock up as you're moving it. So about a fourth of a turn and then test it. And if that doesn't work, then you might need to turn it about another fourth of a turn counterclockwise and then test it. And then another one counterclockwise and then test it. And if you don't feel it moving, you might be going the wrong way. See where he has the extruder head over that? So you want to move the extruder head, move the plate, so that the extruder is right over that first. You want to line it up with it like this. See how, see how mine now, remember how mine was perfect? And then you want to be able to drag it and feel it dragging. That's what so we're trying to find. I'm going to turn this counterclockwise. So, so right off the bat, we're going to do And then once we have this one adjusted and we feel it, then we're going to move to this corner back here and then adjust that. So this one's a little bit too tight. So then we want this one to be the same adjustment as that one. So that nozzle is above this. So we're going to turn this about a fourth of a turn counterclockwise and then test it. There we go. And feel about the same amount of tension as we felt when it was above this one. And then once we have both of these, then we're going to do the same thing to the inside one. This one's kind of tough. So we're going to move the paper and the nozzle to the inside and then test that. And then have that drag. And then when you bring it out, you, you can turn this knob right here, and then you can adjust it a little bit, because it's kind of tough to get to when it's not pulled out. And then put it back, maybe push down to make sure that the paper goes underneath it. I'm not going to to push down on the bill plate, and then adjust it. So if you... So like, it's a little bit too tight, so I'm going to pull it out, lowers. and then adjust it a little bit more. And the key to this is to do really small increments. So if you needed to get... When you pull it out, you want to do really small increments. Push it out little by little. If you go too much, then it's going to cause problems. Because you want to have it just that perfect height to where it's not too close and smashing into things, and it's not too far away where it's going to knock stuff loose. Yeah. Or warp. Because if it's too far away, the corners will actually warp up because they won't be able to stick to the building. Um, we're, the one that's on the right side, um, yeah, move this over this one. Do this one first, then we're going to do the back one, then we'll do the inside one that you're doing. Um, if it's moving the papers, you can push down on the plate, and then you can move it over to adjust. So how's it going? Is that working for you guys? Um, right, right now we have some of them that's too tight, so they're not able to move the extruder over the outside screw. Yep, that just so happened. We're, okay. we're so. having to kind of adjust that right now. Yeah, no problem. That's why we do it right now. And this isn't something that you're going to do have to do all the time. Once you get it tuned in and if they're not moving around a whole lot, then they'll be good for even weeks or months at a time. So how's it going? Do you guys need any help? We're, we're still working on it. Okay, let me know if you need any help or you have any questions. Because that's what I'm here for.
Yeah, it's really tricky. The leveling the printer is the is the hardest part of 3D printing. But don't be afraid. If it's too close or too far away, it's easily fixed. It's all about adjusting the level right, on the bottom. Just don't go all the way the other way. Okay, now kind of feel the difference. Kind of feel a little bit of gap. Okay, so now, now the grip. I just turn another quarter. Got more? Yeah, that's about the right vibration. Now we have to do this one, not the other one. No, we're going to do all three. You just did the first one. This part's tough. Okay, I think we all have the first outside one with the proper grit, and so we're ready to move to the back one. Yeah, this one right here. So there's this one. And then you can push this whole thing over and then do the same thing for this. And you want it to feel the same amount of dragging. And you want to feel the paper vibrate as you drag it back and forth. So now you've got one that's back And then we're going to adjust this one right here. We're going to do the same process. See, mine's too loose in that. So I'm going to lefty raise it, righty lower. No, am I supposed to be doing Yes, and the, play, and the plate itself, too. Yes. Because when it loosens, it pushes it up closer. And when it tightens, it pulls it farther away. Because you can see when I squeeze it right here, it's going to be tightening that screw. And that's what it does when you tighten it. it, pulls it hey, Drew, away. I love these round knobs better than the wing nuts. Oh, you like it? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, they don't hurt your fingers. Yeah, you can do tiny adjustments easier with them, I think. You turn it. Um, kind of this way. That's going to raise it. Go to the right. It's going to lower. Titan compresses the springs. Loosening releases the springs. I did that. I made it that. Now this next one that we're going to do, I'm going to give you a hint. What I do is I place it over there and I check it. And then I slide the deck out and I adjust it because my hands are too fat to fit in that little hole. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that one's the best. So just pull it forward and then fit them in there. My hands don't fit either. And then adjust it a little bit and then push it back and then test it. And then I pull it out and adjust it a tiny bit and then put it back and then test it. How's it going? Do you guys need any help? Jeff, you're making my job easy. <laughs> Once they or once they're on and print, but like my set that I haul from the Roger Center, I have to do this almost every time because bouncing in the car will shift. Once these are done, you can hold these up upside down and they'll print. But um, when they first come from shipping, you've got to have this process. And then 
as their friend and lots of kids are doing it if kids start tweaking with stuff and get them off then they need to know how to how to adjust because a, a well, they actually saw it when we were printing the shields. They knew when I was too close. We couldn't even scrape the things off the bed that it was too close. So we learned how to back them off a little bit. Now on this inside one, I, uh, I will line it up and then I'll slide it out, and make the adjustment. Then I'll slide it back in and check the paper, slide it out, make the adjustment. Um, it makes it a little easier. <laughs> and then the other thing is I don't know if Drew said this a while ago but I always after you do it once I always go back to each one one more time to double check it because when you're doing one sometimes the others will get a little bit off yeah we're going to do that okay. yeah just let me know when you guys have all done it one time and then we're going to go back and go over it again How's it going? Okay, I think we've got our all three adjusted. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tap the button and we are going to heat up the nozzle. So to do that, we're going to tap it and then we're going to go to setup and then we're going to click down here where it says preheat soft pull. And that's also the same setting that we're going to do to remove filament. We're going to say preheat soft pull. And then oh, that's yeah. kind of new. So we don't have to, yeah. to guess at 90 degrees. Yeah, exactly. It'll heat it up automatically to there. You know, we program that in our new ones. That's what the new firmware. Oh, and by the way, yeah, we did that research about there and it's really, really complicated to do it without all the different Arduinos and the bootloading sequence. So if right. you want to set up a time to do it, um, then we can just figure it out. Either you come up to the shop or sometime when we travel down to Fort Smith and then we can just get all your printers done. Okay. And get them all uploaded. So then while that's heating up, see that's almost up to 100, then we're going to tap this button and then we're going to click set up and then we're going to click auto home again. So it homes again. And then we're going to do the same thing. So now that it's heated up, we're going to 
go ahead and disable the motors, just like we did before. And then go around and test each one of them all over again. So we'll take our folded sheet of paper, and then we'll test each one of the corners. Back to set up and go to the end of there. And then test it. And the reason that we heat it up is to knock off any filament that might be stuck. So this one seems a little bit loose. There we go. So any filament that might be stuck can give you a wrong reading. So that's what we want to adjust. And this one, I'll pull it out and adjust it a little bit. And push it back. I push down a little bit. There we go. And then once you feel it dragging really well, you can take the paper out. And then unplug it when you're done. It's the same height as each so we're going to check each one of them, and then we're going to unplug it. Yeah, we're basically just going to do it all over again, only when it heated up. How's it going the second time around? Is it a little bit easier? Okay, Drew, you got second it? time around, we've got it. Awesome. So go ahead and unplug all of them. And then unplug it. Once you get it, rebalance the second time, then unplug it. Yep. Well, the always unplug from the unit. So it might seem a little redundant of why we do that, but we do that to make sure that we never leave it on and heated when it's not running. So it's always just good practice to just have it unplugged when you're not printing on it. And that'll make sure that it never stays on and heated because if it's heated and it has filament in it, that's why we didn't load the filament before we level two. It can actually bake it into the end of the nozzle. It can cause all kinds of issues. 
Um, but with the filament loading, you can actually fix a lot of those issues too. So if you have a clog where it's just moving around and nothing's coming out, you can do the same techniques that we're going to do to load and unload the filament to get that clog out. Um, the first one is to every time you unload the filament to always do that preheat soft pull that we hit to level the bill plate right now. And that'll pull out the filament when it's at 100 degrees. And then when it pulls it out at 100, then it'll be at a semi-solid state and it can pull out a lot of the gunk and stuff that's inside of there. But it has to be heated up to at least 100 before you can pull stuff out. So if every time you're removing filament, you do preheat soft pull, that's a really great way to make sure that you, you always are cleaning it out. Kind of like changing the oil in a car. Uh, just basic maintenance uh, and upkeep with it. And then the second thing is when you're loading the filament, we're going to do preheat PLA. And you're actually going to push the filament all the way through the end, and you can actually push the clog out the end of it too. So that's what we're going to do right now. So you can go ahead and plug them back in. And then first though, we're going to raise our nozzle up off of the bill plate. And if the print ends, you don't have to normally do this, but since we leveled it and it's right next to it, we're going to, level, we're going to move it up. So you can spin this if you want to, but it's kind of greasy. So we're going to go ahead and go through the controls on how to do it. <laughs> I just do it so we'll tap on the button here, and then we're going to go to where it says controls. And tap that. And then we're going to go to where it says move axis, and then tap that. And then from move axis, uh oh, I just connected it. Uh oh. Charger, having some camera problems. There we go. And then you're just going to tap the button, and then you're going to go controls, and then you're going to go to move axis, and then you're going to go to 1 mm for 1 millimeter, and then we're going to move the Z. 1 mm, and then tap the Z. And then spin this, you know, like 30 or 40 or 50, just so it'll raise up off. And you can see it's going to move it up off the bill plate. Now, this build surface is going to get really dinged up. You can see how mine has lots of scratches and stuff in it. And that's fine. You can just use this to scrape it flat. Because this replaces tape. So you don't have to use tape anymore. And you can scrape it flat with this or wipe it with a little bit of alcohol to clean it off. What about acetone? You can use acetone too, yeah. We actually use acetone, but you have to be really, really careful with it to not leave it on there for a long time. But if you put a little bit of acetone on a rag and then wipe it real quick, then that's a great way to do it too. Okay. I didn't know if those new, the new layer, if the acetone would eat it eventually like it does a plastic? Um, it won't eat it in the same way, but if you leave it on there for a long time, it will. Um, okay. If you rub it over real quick, it won't hurt it, but if you leave it, then it, it, it has the possibility to do that. So now that it's lifted up, we're going to go ahead and tap our button and then go back to where we went before. So set up and then preheat PLA right there. And then that is going to heat it up to 220, which is what we set in our Cura settings. Make sure that that was all set up. So while this is heating up, go ahead and grab a filament roll and then take the plastic off of around the filament. But make sure when you're not using the filament, you pull it back through this hole right here so it doesn't come unwound and get tangled up. And this just sits on the end like this. And then it's pulled through here so it doesn't come undone. I'll start this one printing for you. And then now, are you guys ready to, to load the filament? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we'll take this and you'll take it out of a little hole, the storage hole on the side, so it doesn't come unwound. And then you're going to clip off the old bit of filament. And you can clip it into a point to make it load better. So you can use your clippers to clip it. And then we'll take this and feed it into the printer. So it's going to feed into this right here. And it's going to feed through this hole and then all the way through this white tube, all the way through to the end of the nozzle. So it's going to go all the way down into this. And then it's going to actually push out the end of the nozzle so you'll see it loaded. And to do that, you'll squeeze this little lever right here and then feed it into that hole. So you'll squeeze it just a little bit and then speed it into there. And you can kind of wiggle it a little to get it through. And then keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing like about eight inches all the way through. And then it'll start to come out the end of the nozzle. All the way to the end. And you also want to make sure that your filament doesn't do this. Because if it does this, this can cause a tangle because it'll actually get stuck around it. So you want to make sure that your filament always rolls easily off of the spool. So we can just back it up a little bit and then put it back on there just like that. And then now our filament is loaded. And we can't quite see some pink, 
So I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this and push a little bit more until we see some coming out. There we go. And then there is our filament. And you might see the old color of filament too because when you push it, it's actually going to purge out the nozzle and maybe any old filament that might be in there. And this is where I mentioned before where you can use the tweezers or one of the other tools to reach in and grab that out of the way. You don't want to use your hands because it's so hot. Even though the filament cools right away, see there's some purple filament that was loaded before. It's kind of the end of its pink. And then now, we'll go ahead and unplug it again. Once we have it loaded. We're still loading plastics. Hold on. Okay, totally fine. Yeah, so when you guys get it loaded, then go ahead and unplug it. You guys got it loaded? Uh, not yet, just about. Okay. So this right here, this, this, guys, you gotta watch this. This will be a picture table where it will stop the free. Let's back up. I would still never, like, leaving one overnight, some of them get crisscross patterns in them. So it will jam a print up in the back. But like when we first unroll them, it's like we do that. If we let them unwrap some, sometimes like here, might end up with a crisscross pattern. If we crisscross, I'd probably hang around for a little Okay, we got them loaded now. All right, awesome. So then we'll go ahead and unplug them, just like we did before, because we want to make sure that it's never just on and heated. So we have it unplugged, and you could just leave it like this. So you could leave for the day, and you wouldn't have to worry about it, um, because the filament can stay loaded when it's unplugged. It's totally fine. So that's how we do that. We just want to reiterate that you always will just want to have it unplugged when it's not printing. And then now, when we're ready to print, you'll just plug it in, and then this is where we pick up on that fourth step. So you design your model in Tinkercad, you make sure it's sliced in the proper settings on Cura, then you transfer it on the SD card using the USB reader, and then put it in the front of the printer, and then the fourth step is where you're gonna print, and that's where we're at right now. So everything's loaded and everything's level, so back to the beginning where we were, we'll tap on the button, and then we're gonna spin to where it says refresh SD card. And then that reloads everything that might be on there. And then now we'll go up to where it says print from SD and tap that, and then you should see your model on there. So here's my six-sided dice test. But then underneath on yours, you guys will see test prints, so you can click on that, and you can print something that's in there. There's also the STL files for an extra spool holder are on there, and anything that you save is going to be inside a print from SD. So by tapping on that, and then I can click six-sided dice right there, or I can click back and go back to my other one, and there's my six-sided dice test that I saved, and then tap that. And then now it's going to heat up to the printing temperature. It's going to zero itself out, and it's going to print. So the robot will now print until it's done. And this is the progress bar. When this fills all the way up, that's going to tell you how long your, your print has to left. And then this is the time that's elapsed. So when that time goes down, it goes up, that's when you know how long your print is taking. And then inside of Cura, it'll tell you how long your print is going to take. And I'll stay on with you guys to make sure that um, each one of them has a good first layer that's sticking down. So did everybody choose something? How long is on that six-sided die? Uh, it's like almost 30 minutes, I think, like 25 minutes, something like that. Why did you take the 12-minute rocket off? Uh, because the rocket wasn't uh, necessarily educational. 
So we took that one out. You're killing me. That's the best thing to make sure that you have a print bed loaded correctly and uh, it's quick. So we actually have a new rocket test that we do now um, that we're thinking about um, starting to include on there. It's like a leveling test that actually prints a larger rocket in the middle and then it prints a line all the way around the outside edge so you can test to see if it's printed. That's and, cool. And we're planning this on putting that in there with our new manual. So yeah, we're gonna upgrade to that. So then you can see like all, all around the edges on what's level and what's not. But I can send you the rocket file if you want it. <laughs> I have it on our other flash drives. I just don't have it here okay. with me. I, I, we actually have it on the web. We put those files in case the teacher actually didn't say, accidentally deletes them so awesome. that they can pull them off. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, we also didn't make the rocket ourselves, which is another reason why it's not on there. We've made both the keychain and the die, but we didn't make the rocket. So we're going to have all stuff that we made. So then now it's going to zero it out and then start printing. So how are y'all's printers looking? A lot of them are still warming up and hadn't started printing yet. That's fine. Well, sometimes it takes a second for the pressure to build up in the nozzle. But you should see a line around the edge. How's it looking? Are they all printing? Yes. Yeah, okay, awesome. Great. So that's all I got, guys. Do you have any more questions for me? Okay, great. Well, um, Jeff, uh, he'll send me all you guys' contact emails, and then I'll send this video to you guys, as well as our links to our lesson plan, troubleshooting, and our tech support request, and all that information you guys are having, because we have your back. We want to make sure that 3D printing is as easy as it can possibly be because we know it's complicated. Thank you, Drew. Um, I appreciate you, and I'll get you those. Since we're sitting so close to five and they have some engagements, um, I've actually got to get to my daughter's volleyball game, okay. but I will for sure get those to you, if not tonight, tomorrow. Okay? okay? Yeah, that's I fine. I can send it out tomorrow. It's no big deal. Okay. So, all right. Well, do you guys have any more questions? I think that's it. All right. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, you guys have a great one. See ya. Thank you. Bye.